our meeting is in order, and we will now call on Chairperson William McCurdy. Present. Vice Chairperson Tick Sagerblum. Here. Commissioner Marissa Brown. Commissioner Nancy Bruni. Present. Commissioner Perry Cox. Present. Commissioner Richard Churchio. Commissioner Valerie Craig. Present. Commissioner Michael Disman. Here. Commissioner Lishana Turner. A quorum is present and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll now uh, go into public comment. This is a time set aside for uh, items that are that you would like to speak to that are listed on our agenda. If you have comments that you would like to speak to uh, that are listed on our agenda, we ask you to come forward at this time. All right, seeing none, we'll move to the so, item number three, uh, approval of the minutes. Is there approval? Move for approval. We have approval by Vice Chair Sagerblum. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Cox. Is there any comment? Here in San Diego, we'll vote all in favor. Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Minutes are approved. We're now moving to the approval of the agenda. I entertain a motion. Move for approval of the agenda. We have a motion by Vice Chair Sigerbo for approval. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Bruin. Uh, is there any discussion on that motion? Hearing and seeing none, move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? <laughs> motion is adopted. The agenda is approved. We're ready for business. We now move on to section number two and receive a report from the executive director. Good afternoon, commissioners and, and audience. Just had a couple things I want to update us on today. If you all recall, um, the last two years we've been a, uh, been involved with the uh, CNI planning grant. This is where the agency was awarded a um, little less than a million dollars, like seven hundred thousand dollars through the planning process for the CNI, which includes um, Marble Manor and Historic West Side. Well, we made a decision that we would go for the implementation grant. Uh, normally it would be a year later, but there was a NOFA that was put out by HUD, and we, uh, we went for the NOFA now. So I'm pleased to announce that we've, uh, we're in the process. The implementation or the, um, the hit the button um, date is next Thursday, or the 13th. And we're ready, we're working with EJP We've submitted all of our documentation. They're reviewing it, and uh, we have all the confidence in the world that we'll get it in on time. Again, this is for $50 million to complement the work that we're going to do at Marble Manor in conjunction with the uh, Silver West Side Project. And I just wanted to take a moment to thank um, the team, uh, our team, the city team, uh, the work with folks in the county. There's some. Uh, there's some, some dollar pledges that needed to be made to show that this is not just an housing authority effort, but this, uh, this is a Southern, uh, Southern Nevada regional effort. And uh, our team um, really put their hats on, got together with other uh, uh, partners in the city, um, the uh, social service, there's a number of components. But I'm pleased to say that we did, we will meet the uh, February 13th deadline. In fact, the consultants, EJP, that we're working with, they're reviewing all of the information right now. So I wanted to give a shout out to the team and then to those of you who helped us to shepherd things and uh, get with the right people, again, to show a total effort, not just a housing authority effort. Um, so on that, uh, when would they make their decision? I want to say it's sometimes in October. Sometimes in October we'll hear back from them, and this is a, uh, we don't know how many awards will be made, we're thinking maybe four or five, but uh, it's up to 50 million, and if we, if we make what's called a short list, I'll be coming back to you all to um, help us put a presentation together, be it, you know, some of us will go to Washington, D.C. I've talked to my peers who've been awarded the uh, grant, and it becomes an all-out, let's go to Washington and show them why we're the best for it. If HUD doesn't come here, 
And even in that case, having a situation where, um, you know, we just put our best Southern Nevada, Southern Nevada hat on and show the world that, uh, that we're ready to do this. Well, it helped that you hired the two best people from the city. You have a great yeah. city councilwoman and you have two people from the county. So I think you got your bases covered. <laughs> You know, Commissioner, it's interesting you say that because in the introduction letter, I had to show why we thought we were worthy. And probably the biggest part of that that um, intro was the the strength that we have in the board and those behind by having a, a regional housing authority. So we're, we're excited about that. Thank you, guys. Yeah. And what is the total cost of the project? I know the implementation rate is 50. Frank, the CNI, when it's all said and done with the, the mixed income. Uh, with everything, we're going to be looking at somewhere between uh, five and oh, sorry. Or six hundred million dollars. Frank Stafford, Frank Stafford, director of development modernization. We're going to be looking at anywhere between five hundred to six hundred million dollars. So it's, it's going to be a big, big price set. Okay, and we're talking a total of maybe uh, eight hundred units for just the CNI. Yes, it could be up to 800 units for that. And that's yeah. mixed income, you know, the, yeah. the replacing the 235 at, at Marble Manor and then building on top of that. All right. Thank you, I apologize. I have a time that we're just have to run off to, but oh, okay. you have a good quorum, I think so. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Um, and we want to make sure that we mark uh, Commissioner Brown as, as present and Commissioner Churchill again as absent excuse. Very good. Uh, I think we have a report from. I was going to have Frank coming back up and talk, just talk in general about some of the RAD activities. You know, in addition to CNI, there are other um, building that we have going on, and Frank and his team has been leading that effort. And I just wanted to have him talk about it. Okay, so this is to be a, just a brief update on the two uh, RAD properties that we've been working on. Uh, the Jamestown Tower, which uh, the picture you see up there was uh, taken prior to starting any construction at that particular site. Uh, this is a 200 unit senior apartment complex. Uh, what was unique about this particular development is that we did uh, what's called a Section 18 RAD blend. Uh, we did RAD, RAD projects going back now for probably roughly nine years. But the Section 18 RAD blend, blend is a fairly new concept that HUD has rolled out. And our housing authority is one of only a handful that have uh, uh, did a project of this type. What that means is that we got a 60-40% split uh, of vouchers where 120 of those would be similar to regular Section 8 vouchers with the higher rents that are coming in. And then the other ones would be uh, RAD vouchers, which we get for our regular RAD property, where you have rental income coming in with those, but it's not quite as high. So that, that would make this project, you know, more viable as it as it goes on uh, with the cash flow that's going to be coming in. Uh, Cobblestone, Cobblestone Construction is the contractor. Uh, we uh, have a we have a closing date on this particular one, the fall of uh, 24. We are running slightly behind. We're trying to wrap up phase one of this project uh, March. And Tommy, could you show the next slide? Uh, as as you can see. We're doing it in four wings. So the wing to my right, uh, where you see the uh, more of the yellowish paint color, that particular wing is the one that we're under construction with 49 units. Uh, we did just about all the rough work inside. It's, it's kind of hard to tell in the picture, but we put new windows in, new railings. Uh, the roofing work is in progress, and that's the wing that we're pushing to have done by the end of March, and then we're going to sit down and look at our schedule because we have to uh, to uh, compress that schedule to make sure we get this one wrapped up before the end of this year. Did we uh, re-rock or re-drywall the entire, uh, that entire wing as well? Yeah, we, we basically now, now some of those uh, uh, separation walls are CMU block, but all of the interior walls, we came in and ripped everything out. We came back with metal studs, so it's going to be new drywall, new wiring, new plumbing, uh, electric, electrical, mechanical. All that will be new. Okay. And we're going to have uh, an impressive uh, array of solar panels on that building. This is one of the buildings that the housing body pays all of the electric for. So those solar panels are going to really offset and save us on electrical costs going on in the future. And uh, 
like I said, we'll be doing it in four phases with the plan to have all two of the units completed by the end of this year. Uh, the other project we have is, is Hullum Homes. We started that project back in uh, October of 23. Hullum is located in the uh, unincorporated Clark County area near uh, Owens and Nellis. Uh, we've started demo on five of the buildings, which consists of roughly 22 units, as well as there's an administrative building uh, on the property where we're going to enlarge that building so we could actually have an on-site property manager as well as support of services, uh, a computer lab, other services for the residents. I, yeah, yeah, there's a few more photos as you can see. Uh, so basically, we're, we're working on those 22 units with the projected completion time of roughly April to, to April to mid-April for the first five. And what we do with our RAS is once we could complete one phase of buildings, the other families are remaining on the site still in their, their units. And I, there may be one of some of the occupied units that you can see. As we finish a group of units like those 22, then we'll take 22 families from the next phase, move into the, that group, and then we'll start working on those. So that's kind of where we're at with our two RAS. The price tag on those two of those projects combined uh, is about 60, 61 million dollars total. All right, thank you. Any questions for members of the board? Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. We'll now move on to uh, section number three, consent agenda item number six. Commissioner Jordan. Yeah, thank you. Wanted to um, just make sure that everyone acknowledges the receipt of the. Thank you. Wanted to acknowledge, make sure everyone got the newsletter. Um, that's something that, again, we're going to keep doing. It's really given us an opportunity to track the good things that we're doing. And um, we're gonna change the format here and there, but again, just really good information. Wanted to also announce that um, the last time we were together, uh, we were in search of a HCV director. You know, Alicia had left for personal reasons to move back home. And the, um, the interim or, or temporary director at that time was uh, Rosa Garcia. We did a national search and I'm pleased to announce that Rosa is our new um, director of HCP. So, and then last but not least, I want to welcome Commissioner Brown back, having had a, a baby boy, correct? Yes, correct. And so, uh, and mom and baby are doing well. So. Yes, Very good. Commissioner Dax concludes my report. Thank you. Congratulations, Commissioner Brown, and also Ms. Rosa. Uh, we now move to consent agenda item number six, the approval request to write off outstanding tenant, account, tenant accounts, uh, receivable vacated accounts for the period ending December 31st, 2023. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve All right. item number six. Can we have a motion by Commissioner Bruni, second by Commissioner second. Brown. Is there any discussion on the motion? This is probably a really silly question, but because I know you work really hard, or the company that we have an outside company third party that takes care of this, correct? Fred, Fred is actually out of the country, and Rod, the director. Hi, Rod. Hi, Rod Bidden, director of finance. Uh, yeah, we use. Hawk. I'm sorry. Yeah, we use uh, Argon Collection Agency to do all our debt collecting. Okay, and so I'm sure they're employing all manner of ways to help residents at the same time to try to keep the collections, you know, coming in and, and is there anything they can do differently to the, help? The collection agency? Yeah. Um, I mean, are you satisfied with out. them? Are uh, you satisfied with, yeah, with the results? Yeah, they do a good job for us. Okay. We did have another collection agency about eight years ago that we moved away from because we didn't feel like they were doing the job well enough. But Argon has been really well in um, their attempts to collect the bad debt. Okay, and if there's a resident that's moved out or um, is even living there and they're trying to collect debt and they're just unable to do so, what is the process for them to get help? Uh, for a tenant that's moved out of our program, um, <clears throat> to get help. With like if they them. just can't pay it, like they are in a bad situation and they cannot pay the debt. 
Um, I'm you know, honestly, I don't, I don't wrong know. Wrong question. I'm so yeah. sorry. Okay, Maybe thanks. Not. I really appreciate it. But I wanted to say, Commissioner, we can have some conversation online, awesome. probably about how people get there and all of the steps we take, you know, before we move to eviction, before they find themselves. You know, we have a, a very robust social service part in resident services that, you know, the manager will say people are falling in the rears. Um, we'll try and work with them. Keep in mind that your rent is 30% of your income. So if your income goes down, your rent goes down. And, um, but we can, we can share some things that we're doing. Your point is because it leads to people becoming homeless, on and on and on. We can talk about those things we do before we get here. I appreciate I, that. And I think, I'm so sorry. And I think you there, I, this is not negative. I'm not implying anything about the housing authority. I think you all do a great job and you help people, period. I mean, I just am talking about a balance, right? I'm just trying to understand you know, it, there's going to be some that absolutely will never be able to pay that back. And so I was just wondering what happens. Right. Also, it's a large amount of money to, to write off for that. Okay. So I just, yes, I'd love to understand more of how it works. I don't know that I can make any difference in that. I think you're all making the differences that need to be made. I just, for my own information, want to understand. I did have a call about it. But again, I think. I think y'all doing a great job, so this is a bad light at all on you. And what might be helpful is at our next meeting if we could just get a presentation on how you know how the entire process works, so that we can, as a board, be clear on all the um, the, the, the ways that we're trying to help, but also right. you know just the process in general. So that would be helpful, Commissioner Brown. Yeah, I was going to say maybe we can get some type of uh, repayment plan that they can get enrolled in to do like a monthly payment to repay. And we have those. Oh. Okay. Yeah, but but again, I to contribute to your point uh, on the March agenda, we'll have a presentation by finance that walks us through the repayment agreements we have in place. Um, the fact that you have repayment agreements and there's a process that says that if you miss steps, you get another chance. We can walk you through all that. Commissioner yeah. Brody. Can I also ask, um, when we present this information, can we do a comparison to the prior year? Like I know that this number seems a little bit higher than some of the other numbers in the summertime. Like I think I remember like 74,000. So just be helpful to know, because I'm sure there are Trends, trends yeah. and you know maybe with the holidays the number goes up, but it would be good to know like over time, is this you know are we seeing a spike or is this you know just something that happens within the calendar year? Please, thank you. Yep, we can add that to the yeah. Just add a little note. Good question. Thank you very much for that one. Uh, just for clarification, th these numbers that you see are for three months. Uh, usually we present one month. But because there was no board meeting last month and the earlier time for the December meeting, we weren't able to get the December in either. So that's why they may look, that's why they do look higher than normal. Oh, good. This is three months worth. That yeah. helps. Thank you. Thank you. That. I thought that was for one month. So thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second on the floor. If there are no further comments. Uh, we'll entertain a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone abstain? Any opposition? Motion is adopted. We're now moving on to item number seven. Approval to write off three fleet assets. Uh, Director Jordan is requesting the board's approval to write off three vehicles due to poor working condition. And as you can see, the vehicles are listed here below. Uh, 2002 Ford F-350, uh, 1995, wow. GMC, uh, 3500, 30, and 2002 uh, pressure washer. Uh, Director Jordan. Okay, um, is there any show you'd like to come up and give more uh, information about these items? Uh, Johnny Shaw, the camera manager. Um, just to give you a little bit of a uh, little bit more detail on the on the on the fleet vehicles. The uh, 2000, 2002 floor 350, um, it's basically at, at the end of service, end of, end of life service. Um, it's over 100, 125,000 miles, it's over 10 years old, and that's normally our threshold that we try to stay within. 
uh, for the safety of the uh, of the staff. Um, but it has a, uh, has a lot of um, maintenance requirements that need to be done to the vehicle, and we think it's best to uh, go ahead and dispose of it. The uh, re KB KBB resale is forty nine hundred. And then on the um, on the ninety five GMC, um, although the miles is not quite at a hundred eighty three thousand miles, uh, that resale value is two thousand dollars. <coughs> it has right door damage. Um, it needs six new tires. <coughs> the brake master cylinder um, is leaking. The motor mounts need to be replaced and the transis transmission mounts need to be replaced. And then on the power washer, which has been out of service for uh, several years, um, we don't know the resale value of the, of the power washer. But again, all three of the, <coughs> all three of the um, assets will be sent to uh, the Clark County TNT auction uh, later this month. Okay. Director Murray, excuse me. Uh, um, I have a question. So, when you uh, the sale or the proceeds of the sale, does that go back into the general fund, or where does that go, or does it go towards purchasing a new vehicle? I believe back into the general fund. Yes. Any more questions or comments? Hearing seeing none, we we'll move for a motion for approval. I have a question. Commissioner Turner. This is Commissioner Craig. Uh, Johnny, I'm not trying to be difficult, but you said believe, and all I'm going to say is we're dealing with finances, and so there's a thing about leaving and then there's the data. So how feasible, uh, I mean, belief is one thing, but if you just, you know, we're dealing with data, we're dealing with income, and little spots of small divine, so when you come with us and we ask you a question like that, can you give us data no belief because some people don't believe you know the sky is blue they don't believe a lot of things that's just how you know i feel about that last statement nothing nothing critical just a, a value assessment are you speaking of the power washer no no i, I think johnny uh, commissioner this is uh, lewis johnny was actually deferring the question to finance so it wasn't a matter of whether he believed that you know and he he you probably couldn't see it from here, but he looked to our finance director and said, that's where the money goes. And Rod did say correct. So um, better language could have been used, but we're quite certain that the money goes back to the general fund. Does that help? I mean, yeah, because we have to watch the money. We have to watch. Absolutely. You know, get a good caretaker to be more definitive. Yes. So the, our finance director did affirm that the sale of those assets, the dollars will go back into the general fund. Thank you much. Appreciate it. Okay, and in fact, to give even more clarity, the finance director would like to um, speak on it. Uh, yeah, when they're talking about the general fund, it's the general fund of the program, each program. Right. So if that was, those were public housing vehicles, they would go back to the general fund of the public housing program. If they were Section 8 vehicles, they would go back to the general fund of the Section 8 program. Affordable housing vehicles, the same. Back to the general fund of the affordable housing program. It has to stay within that program to uh, purchase the item. And, and that, I thank you very much because we know public housing is only allocated so much funding anyway. Right. You know, because of what's happened. So, Thank you very much for that. I like that. You're welcome. Are there any further questions? We can now obtain a motion. I move to approve. We have a motion by Commissioner Cox, second by Commissioner Bruni. Uh, is there any other discussion? Hearing saying no, we move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Item number seven is approved. That concludes the end of our consent agenda item. We'll now move on to section number four, acknowledgement of our departed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, and unfortunately, since we last got together, and I, I'll take the, the page from finance, this is not a, a list of one month. This is over three months. 
we've had a, a, a number of tenants um, to leave. So I'm gonna just have the, the name shown up on the board and I'll ask for a moment of silence as we go through. Thank you. Thank you, Director Jordan. May the rest in peace. May we uh, now go to item number nine, approval to increase Reno and Kavanaugh contract C2-2020 in the amount of $648,000 for the legal services required for six mixed finance community housing fund and home and Nevada initiative <coughs> projects. Mr. Stafford. Good afternoon, Frank Stafford, Director of Development Organization. Background on this item, the Procurement Department on behalf of Affordable Housing Program, Inc. conducted the competitive process to procure legal services required for SNRHA's various upcoming mixed finance transactions. Reno and Kavanaugh, PLLC, was the top rate proposal and was awarded contract number C-22020 for indefinite quantity of tasks issued on as needed basis. Service of pursuit of this contract shall begin on the first day of March and end 31st of September 2022 and includes two annual renewal options for a total up to three years ending February 27, 2025, unless otherwise extended, modified, or renewed. To date, we've had eight task orders that have been issued on this contract totaling $370,000. At this time, the uh, SNRHA is working on six different finance projects, and these are all of our projects that were receive funding through the Home East Nevada program and the Clark County Community Housing Fund program. There were Marion Bennett, Old Rose Gardens, Dr. Neville, 28th and Sunrise, Dennis Fritz Bay, and Arthur Sartini Plaza. The uh, Housing Authority has partnered with McCormick, Ron, and Salazar for the development of the new pro complex at the Rose Garden site, where we will be using some fair cloth to rag process. And like I said, this is by Home East Nevada funds. Uh, we have two projects that we uh, worked with the Michaels organization, which is the uh, property at 20th and Sunrise and Dufflin Edwards. And then the Housing Authority is self developing the Mary Bennett Senior 65 unit uh, property where we'll be adding another 59 units. And we're going to be doing the Janice Brooks Bay uh, property as well. <laughs> Rita and Kavanaugh will author review, comment, and track, otherwise handle all legal documentation related to the HUD, Nevada Housing Division, Homies of Auto Funds, LIHTC, Fair Clock Rad, and any other municipal funding as needed in connection with these projects. Their total cost is $648,000, which includes $8,000 for reimbursable for overnight deliveries, message service, third party reports, title litigation, and good standing searches as needed for each project. So this amount is spread over all of those uh, contracts. Reno Kavanaugh is a woman-owned firm. Uh, the owners are Megan Gosheen, Hannah Cassie, Felicia Hewley, Julie McGovern, Barbara Washer, Needle, Martin Walsh, Alfred Levy, Stephen Holmquist, and Dwayne Barrett. This company, this contract is subject to Section 3, and Reno Kavanaugh has indicated it will comply with our Section 3 policy to the grace of state feasible. A representative of Reno Kavanaugh will be available via phone to answer any questions. The executive director requests board approval to increase Reno Cabinet contract number C22020 by $648,000 for legal services required for mixed finance, self develop and fair clock to rag transactions, respectively, for the six projects I described above. Commissioner Cox. Can I ask what their hourly is that they're billing at? I would have to look up that uh, particular number from their contract. But they, they were procured uh, through an RP process. And although I don't know the exact number offhand, their, their rate has been fairly competitive with the uh, other firms that we've been using. So we, we're definitely getting our money's worth from them. Okay. But I can't, I can't get that information. Okay, thank you. And when will this contract? Let's see, it expires February 27th of 2025? 
Yes, that's that's from the original RFP that was issued. Uh, this particular, uh, for these projects that they're working on, they're all tied to the home means Nevada funds, and we have to have an uh, obligation of all of those funds by December 31st of uh, 2024. So the majority of all of their work will be done at that particular time. But the contract actually goes out to 2025, and they're working on our RAG projects as well, but that's not included in this increase. Okay, and then um, there'll be another RFP that goes out for future projects? Yes, we, we typically will do an RFP. Uh, it can be, uh, it's for three years, to be extended for two more years. So every five years at the minimum, we're going out for another RFP for these type of services. And are you happy with their work? Very happy. Okay, thank you, I appreciate it. Are there any additional questions from members of the board? Hearing the same now, we'll move to entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve item number nine. We have a motion by Commissioner Brown. Is there a second? Second. We have a second by Commissioner Brown. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Hearing the same now, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Motion is adopted. We will now move on to item number 10. Item number 10 is approved to increase Raffi Architecture Contract C19041 by $690,250 for architecture engineering design services required for rehabilitation of the Sartini Plaza. Some background is under QBS S19017. The SNRHA procurement department conducted a competitive selection process for procure professional architect and engineering service for indefinite quantities and task PHAY. Through this project, Rapid Architect was awarded a contract where he serves as needed for acquisition, rehab, modernization, and other RAD conversion projects. The development modernization project has been negotiated with Rapid Architect for their firm to provide A and E services for rehab of Sartini Plaza, which is a 220-unit senior development located at 900 Brush Street. Rafi submitted a pro proposal in the amount of $690,250 for this work, which Mardell has determined to be fair and reasonable costs. Funding this work will be paid from the SNRHA Capital Funds as an architectural engineering services are an eligible expense. This contract will be subject to Section 3, and Rafi has indicated they will comply with our Section 3 policy to the greatest extent feasible. A representative from Rafi Architect is available to answer any questions. Action request is that director requests the board to approve, approve to increase Rafi Architect contract numbers C19041 by $690,250 for the architecture and engineering services needed for the rehab of Arthur Sartini Plaza. Thank you so much. Does that complete your presentation? Yes, it does. Are there any uh, questions from members of the board, either in person or online? Hearing seeing none, uh, we're entertaining a motion. I'll make a motion to approve item number 10. We have a motion by Commissioner Brown. Is there a second by Commissioner Brown? Any discussion on the motion? Hearing and seeing none, uh, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Motion is adopted. We'll now move on to our final yes. item of the day, uh, section number six, any new business items. Commissioner Bruni. Can I ask that we have a formal presentation on the Choice Neighborhood grant, please? Just the major components, just so that if when we do get um, a short interview, a short list interview, we're well versed in the components of the grant program, please. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, we're going to have at our next board meeting an update on. Uh, the finance, and we're also going to have an update on the Choice Neighborhood Initiative. I would also request that uh, the board be provided with a list of all projects and the dollar amount that are associated with them, as, long, as well as the uh, districts that they're in. I think that oftentimes we, we get these, uh, you know, these sheets of paper with these big numbers on them, uh, but we don't really equate that to the number of people we're actually going to be helping with these approvals. Uh, so that we can also include them within our newsletters and so forth to talk about the good work that the Housing Authority is doing. So if we can have that as well, I think that would be extremely helpful for the community at large. Um, any other new business items? All right. 
Uh, we will now move on to the second period of citizens' participation. This is the second time set aside for public comment. At this period of time, you will come forward with items that you would like to wish that you would wish to speak to that are not on the agenda. We ask that you limit your comments to two minutes. You come forward, you state your name for the record, and we remind everyone that comments that are uh, that are you know disrespectful will not be tolerated. Um, and we ask that you come forward with uh, your comments at this time. All right. No comments. We're not going to beg you. So it's good seeing everyone. Uh, again, Happy New Year. And uh, let's continue to do good work. This meeting is adjourned.